Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Oh, you know what? I forgot my uh, forgot my flute. I said I got my antler claves. Let me see if I can tag some people in this. Get this information out here today. I want to share with you a prayer. We've been meeting together every day here. I know it's a little bit later than normal. Um, but I also feel like this is a great opportunity to stay in the, uh, in the discipline of meeting together in prayer. So I give thanks for all of you joining and give thanks for all of you being here. So I'm going to go ahead and share this out to a few people and hope you get some encouragement today. I have a great quote for all of you. Um, a quote from the famous, powerful, first uh, African president of South Africa. So I hope that uh, you'll be encouraged by this and it will um, help you in your life and, you know, it'll shed some light on the time that we're in right now. That's what this is all about here, being together here in this morning time, setting our intention, setting our day up to uh, for it to be a good day. You know, we want to have a good day today. We're going to cast out the vibrational frequency, right? of that uh, blessed day, that day of great um, ability, great achievement, great love, great gratitude, all those things manifested in our day, in our morning. So just a few people here left to invite. So I hope all of you enjoy the morning prayer and this time of intention. Give thanks. So just a couple more. Wow, this list just keeps, every, you know, all the people that I see in here are people that I just love so much. Friends that I really love and enjoy being around. So uh, let's see. All right, I think that's about it. I'm not going to go any further because if I do, I'll be here forever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see, just a couple more. <laughs> it's just too many friends here. All right, that's good. So, um, the quote that I have for you today uh, is one that, you know, those of us that grew up in the 90s, grew up in the 2000s, those that remember a time in which uh, there was great sentiment, you know, upon the earth. There was great movement, uh, political movement, and uh, there was a lot of um, challenges for, for people, you know, and uh, not to say that it's not a challenging time here. I mean, the human experience is challenging if you've lived long enough. So I'll go ahead and introduce myself here to you um, in the traditional language and then also in the contemporary to begin um, this this time of encouragement and prayer. So Dogate Andrew Ecker Yinishe Adon Ne Nishinigi A Ide Nishe Irish Bashachin Ide Dashache German Dashanali Akote Go A E Tishli A Portland Oregon Inisha Shema A Kathy Lindsay Woye Shaza A Del Ecker Wole. So my name is Andrew Ecker, my mother Kathy Lindsay, my father Dale Ecker, my mother's mother Elva Gallegos, Apache woman from New Mexico, my father's mother Evelyn Beatty, an Irish woman from Pennsylvania, my mother's father Leroy Lindsay, Apache man from Arkansas, my father's father, Wayne Eckert, German and Algonquin from Pennsylvania. I have a daughter, Bailey, a son, Peyton, and a beautiful, beloved fiance, Monica. Very grateful to be here with all of you. Thank you so much for tuning in to this time of encouragement and prayer. So I, I wanted to share last night. I woke up in the middle of the night about three o'clock in the morning.
And as I woke up, I remembered Nelson Mandela for some reason. Like, he just came to me. And I think it's because I've been um, really thinking about the about captivity. And, you know, Nelson Mandela, he did 27 years in prison, which is something I can relate to because I, you know, was in prison myself. Uh, what's different is I wasn't out there as a part of a huge political movement or fighting on the side of righteousness other than the righteousness of what I thought was inside of me, which was the war on drugs, right? The United States system was my combative energy, and I was like David, it was like Goliath, and the sling, right, that I was using against Goliath, the stone inside of the sling was LSD, you know, this was... Uh, why I went to prison. I went to prison for selling LSD and mushrooms for three and a half years. But in Nelson Mandela's life, there's always been this sort of envy that I've had for people who have been righteous political prisoners, people that have stood up to the system, uh, stood up to the oppression, and have uh, done their best to be, um, I guess resilient in that space, you know, resilient in the space of knowing that they're on the side of, of righteousness, they're on the side of love, they're on the side of equality. And Nelson Mandela was definitely one of these individuals in my mind, as a as a young person growing up in, in Portland, Oregon, and in also in Arizona here, um, in Peoria. So, so much of, of our lives, for those of us that are kind of the X generation, uh, we had these, you know, in protests, we would see them on television, free Nelson Mandela. Well, it sparked an interest in me. Why are people talking about that? What has he done? And I remember researching his life and being really filled with this idea of, wow, this is an excellent person that's been born into my generation. This is a person that has gone through the struggle. I could relate to that struggle. I grew up in a home where both my parents were addicted to drugs and my mom died of a cocaine overdose and my father died of cirrhosis of the liver. This idea of living in oppression, of having this oppressive force over me as a child was definitely the institution of the United States government and the war on drugs, which was really a war on poverty, on poor people like me. You know, as a child watching my mom get beat up in front of me and all the things that I went through as a kid, this was my war. Nelson Mandela, he was in a war, and it was a war against poverty and in injustice, and it was a war against bigotry and racism. So many of these things I could relate to, and I think that there was a part of me that just really envied him. And as I began to learn a little bit more about him and realize that he did 27 years in prison, it was just like, you know, these were the idols of my life. You know, the guys that came out of prison with tattoos and came out and were, you know, hard gangsters and everything else. These guys I kind of looked up to because they were the people that really, you know, stood up to this city in my life. Sorry about that. So Nelson Mandela was definitely one of those individuals. He was definitely a rebel with a cause. Um... So today, right, I wanted to share his words, and his words, I feel, are very important for us today, especially in the climate that we're in and what many of us are facing, how individuals that have some kind of uh, set agenda are use, utilizing this tragedy as a way of promoting their political, uh, their political means, so he wrote this. He said, resentment is like drinking poison and hoping it will kill your enemies. This is a man that has gone into prison for 27 years for standing up to a colonial regime, standing up to uh, the people in, in South Africa, you know, the people that were opposing uh, the will of the African people. These were colonials that had come to Africa and had made racist de decisions, had imprisoned the people. He was standing up to them. And he writes this, that resentment is like drinking poison and hoping it will kill your enemies. Now, resentment is an energy, right? It is a vibrational program. And some of us, uh, maybe you've listened to my teachings on 
um, the emotional emotional sovereignty. And I'm going to go into this right now because I want us to understand the design of resentment and the design of so many of the vibrational programs that really begin to resonate inside of our own personal spatial energy and then transform the metaphysical architecture of our reality and in turn bring through the subatomic frequency that material matter that shifts our consciousness. Those of you that have worked in the alchemy of energy understand that through consciousness, through thought, and through vibrating at a frequency, you can create a gravitation. And that gravitational pull then pulls in its likeness. Well, realize what Nelson Mandela is saying here is a teaching about vibrational program. He's realizing that as he is sat with resentment, can you imagine sitting with resentment for 27 years in confinement and captivity in that realization that your uh, oppressive colonial regime is controlling your life for 27 years? How can you find freedom in that? It only comes when you find freedom within yourself. And when you find freedom within yourself, you find emotional sovereignty. Emotional sovereignty is really the power to flow through the vibrational programs of emotion, right? Emotion, energy in motion in order to serve your optimal state of human design. So what is it that, that Nelson Mandela is saying to you? How is that resonating with you? Because it's resonating with me in a deep way of sovereignty. Inside of the institutional setting, inside of lockdown, inside of quarantine, you're going to be confronted with the energies of emotions. You're going to be confronted with the energies. The distractions that are normally there are not there. Now you're sitting with the emotional evolution of realizing these programs that serve you and the programs that don't serve you. What is it that serves your optimal state of human design? Is it to sit with the resentment of the victimization of those that have wronged you? Of course not. Of course you're not going to find a resolve in that. What you're going to find is a gratitude for under well this is going you're going to how to this is how you're going to find sovereignty is if you allow yourself to understand that there is gratitude in the emotion that you're experiencing not to supersede it or bypass it or spiritually step to gratitude without recognizing the emotion instead in vibrational programming we don't um, go into the space of gratitude initially instead we harness the power of victim you see if it wasn't for the power of the victimization that Nelson Mandela had in his understanding of the density of that human suffering, the suffering that he went into for 27 years, he was able to go into that density, the density of the collective consciousness. The collective consciousness was feeling the oppression of racism, the oppression, the oppression of apartheid. All of this created a density of energy. In his ability to access that density of energy, he was able to create a catalyst that that took him from being a person that had served a life sentence, 27 years. In this country, life is 25 years, 27 years. So he served life plus two. Okay. And in realizing that he was able to wrestle with resentment, he was able to go into the energy of resentment and to find the fuel and the catalyst for bringing him to a place in which he was able to become the president, the first African president of South Africa. Amazing. This is what your trauma, what your pain can do for you. If you allow yourself through intimacy and vulnerability to step into that place of not denying the frequency of resentment, of grief, of pain, of sorrow, of betrayal, but instead to step into that with empathy and harness the power of that density to bring about change in your life. You see, our emotions are held in captivity, in density, and they're looking for a way to find flow. But the constructs of, of our mind will fortify that space of density. We will fortify resentment. We will fortify anger, betrayal, all of those things because it serves the process of victim. If you realize that life is a cycle, that we are on a circle and in that circle, right, if you look at this little antler, it's a circle. It's a circle way of understanding life. The circle is a very powerful form of sacred geometry because circular thinking allows for us to understand that the process of victim, right, is emerging into a space in which we realize freedom and sovereignty. Look at your emotions as vibrational programs, apps on your phone. 
If you realize that you are the hard drive that holds the access point to the apps, you can call upon those apps when you need your program, when you need your hard drive to run in that frequency. If you wanna to connect to resentment in a person, if you wanna to connect to suffering in a person, go into your victim and connect to that energy and then utilize the density of that frequency to bring about transformation. What is the transformational energy? that takes the density and breaks it up. The teacher of teachers is gratitude. The teacher of teachers is the ability to be thankful for that which you've gone through. When you come to the place of service in the energy of your density, when you come to the place of service through your trauma, through your pain, and you realize that by sharing in sacred space with another human being that has been through something similar to you, you will then become thankful. It is the practice that brings us to that place. Realize that life is a practice. There are no failures in this. We are all practicing to work out the most optimal state of human design. And in your practice, are you showing up in your vulnerability? Are you showing up in your love? Are you showing up in your willingness to be a member of this connected, interconnected space in which we really begin to hone in and create a way of life, a cultural way of life? You see, we are really creating the culture that will be the precedent for the ideas of production for the means of restoration. How are we creating a restorative value within ourselves? Are we restoring the nature of the feminine, the masculine, and the inner child? Are we really stepping into a place in which we can begin to hone and develop our emotional intelligence and subsequently our emotional freedom? It's very easy for us to get caught up in the resentments of yesterday and to miss out on the realization of the beauty of today. You know, in my life, there were so many opportunities to point fingers at the institution, at my parents, at my grandparents. Uh, yesterday or the day before, Monica was going through um, an old group of, of letters. And, you know, this is very personal. I'm going to share this with you. Uh, I still hold on to the letters that my mom wrote me from prison. Uh, some of the letters that she wrote to me when I was a kid and I was separated from her, um, some of those letters really, they're, they're so meaningful to me. You know, they're so special to me. Uh, here she was, a person that uh, was struggling with cocaine addiction and still loved her son so much. You know, it was unfortunate that uh, we lived in a society that wanted to war with people that were struggling with addiction rather than embrace and love them because love is the only thing that overcomes that separation from source. Love is the only thing that overcomes those spiritual confinements and captivities. And I, that space, you know, of how my mom uh, in her struggle and in her pain, in her uh, mental illness was so persecuted, was so hurt by so many different people, by, you know, the boyfriends that, you know, in the middle of the night, I'd wake up to her screaming, you know, because she was being beaten by some drug addict that she had brought home in her loneliness, you know, in um, the relationship that she had to my my grandparents and how they just ostracized her. And they had been hurt by her so many times in her addiction that it was painful for them to even see her, you know, and how that you know, basically fell on to me. All of these things were you know, as a child, as a young boy, I was, of course, protective over my mom. I wanted to be her savior. I wanted to be her protector. I loved her so much. And I realized that, you know, I, I couldn't do that. I couldn't be that savior for her. I couldn't, I couldn't heal her <clears throat> of her addiction. I couldn't be the person to take that pain from her, no matter how many times I prayed and cried and I remember when, you know, they would be gone for days sometimes out, you know, stealing and um, out doing the things that they did. And she would come home and I would just run to her. But the first thing that she needed to do was get well. You know, the first thing that she needed to do was get high. And I remember, um, you know, being by the doorway and crying, you know, as my mom and her group of criminal friends would rush into the bedroom and be in there, you know, fixing up, you know, fixing dope. And... It's like those those pains and those traumas of my childhood as a little boy, they come up and they come up and they come, and come in ways of of relational spirituality. Right. How do I relate to Monica? 
Am I that, you know, little boy, you know, wanting attention from Monica? Am I that little boy wanting attention from the business relationships that we have? All of these things are a part of that. And if I allow for resentment to be the catalyst inside of that density and in that void, I could turn into a person that would have so much trauma in their lives that they, they could destroy every relationship. You know, subsequently realizing that from a perspective in which I'm able to hone in that energy, that I'm able to actually look into the space of density, not to deny it, not to run from it and be afraid of it, but to really be with it, to sit with it, to sit with the trauma of resentment and to realize that it is the fuel for the fire of the creative power in which I step into. You know, this person that's before you today isn't a person that has gone through a major education. I haven't been in college for years, you know, all of these things. I've self-educated myself. I've had to learn and teach myself because fear and the captivity of fear and drug addiction and all those things kept me from learning. And also the ego, you know, protected me so much that I would dismiss my teachers as stupid. You know, these are the things that I told myself in my childish mind. But the person that I'm in, that's in front of you today has had to learn to master energy, has had to learn to master resentment, has had to learn to master the captivity of fear and anger and all of those things in order to find a sense of freedom, a sense of sovereignty, a sense of the ability to come now and to talk to you from my personal spiritual lessons and to share with you the medicine that has really evolved me into a being that can serve through love and gratitude. You know, this is what I would love for you to experience in your life. And I know know that taking you to that place I, I, lo I you sometimes will lose a lot of people you know on on the videos when I start talking about being the son of two drug addicts when I start talking about people shooting dope and gangs and all this stuff that I went through as a kid because people it's challenging for them to fathom that you know it's challenging for them to see me in that space and it's difficult for them because of course they they look at a drug addict maybe they have a pre conceived notion of what a person that's addicted to drugs is supposed to be like. And as I break that cocoon and I step into them and I become, you know, more of a spiritual person, a person that's even in a space in which I facilitate sacred space, it's challenging. You know, sometimes it's challenging for me, you know, to think about how much I've changed in my life. You know, when I look back at my life and I think about a person that was, you know, this young kid, this teenager, you know, sitting in the trailer in my grandparents' backyard, shooting dope with my dad, you know, it's like, what, how, how did that happen? You know, how did, how did I get to that place where I was so low, so broken, so in, in, in a space in where self-harm was a reality. You know, this is what Nelson Mandela is talking about when he says drinking the poison of resentment, right? I was drinking resentment into my life, thinking that that rebellion against the system was going to hurt the United States government. Of course not. You know, of course, like the war on drugs was not something that either side could win. Because it's a war on emotions. It's a war on captivity inside of the human spirit. You know, these are things that we have to evolve into understanding. We have to evolve into understanding that war and violence and all of these tools that we have in our arsenal have all come from a place that is no longer needed. We need to learn how to love one another, how to be, and it starts with self-love. It starts with understanding your own self and being in relationship to the feminine, the masculine, the child within you, your relationship to new people, your relationship to your family, your relationship to the community, and of course, your relationship to the elements, to source, to spirit, to the angels, to the holy ones. All of this, these ideas are con concepts of relational spirituality. Because through relationship, we step into the, the obedience of living the lifestyle that the Creator has chosen for us. It's not your, the plans for the Creator for you to perish, for you to be harmed, for you to destroy yourself through addiction. 
The plans are for you to prosper exceedingly and abundantly above, to evolve beyond that space. Trust me, I've been there. I've been in that hurting space. I know many of you are drinking yourselves to sleep at night because it's just too much right now. You know, they say that alcohol purchases have gone up more than any in the world. But is this really the practice that you want to instill in yourself? Is that you need to have a substance in order to come to grips with your emotions? Of course not. You are more evolved than that. Realize the patterning in your life. And what is the stimulus for that need? What is the need that's happening there? Why are you searching for a chemical to replace a relationship? You know, I can share with you that... I, there was a time in my life when I really searched my soul, searched deep within the vibrational layers of programming. What was it that was the first program that initiated itself? When did addiction first come into my life? And I'll, you'll be surprised when I say this to you, unless you've read my book. But the time that addiction came into my life was not when I put the needle in my arm, or when I hit my rock bottom, as people say in the contemporary world of, of, um, of treatment, that wasn't when addiction came into my life. It wasn't when I got arrested for minor consumption when I was 15 years old and I was an alcoholic. It wasn't when I was smoking weed with my homeboys in the vadio that I lived in. It wasn't when uh, I was going and stealing bottles of whiskey from the store. That was not when addiction came into my life. I'll tell you when addiction came into my life. I was a little boy and my, me and my mom had been out stealing all day. We were stealing Pendletons. I don't know if any of you remember those, but there used to be these flannels that people would wear and they were like really nice flannels. And um, <clears throat> there was a part of Portland it's called Northeast Portland. And this was like where all the gangsters lived, all the Crips and the Bloods and all these guys. So my mom, right, she was going to this neighborhood and she was going there to sell these Pendletons. And I remember her stopping at a payphone back then. You know, this is the 1980s. And um, I'm just a little guy, you know, I'm probably, I'm not even 10. I mean, I'm like young. And uh, she stops and she's talking to these people. And I remember they must have been new people because I had been to a few dope houses. I had been to some connections. I had been to, you know, some fences, people that sell stolen merchandise, people that, you know, were even bikers and gangbangers and all this stuff. You know, I've been to those places. Uh, but this was a new place, I guess. And my mom, you know, decided to leave me at the park. Right. And I'm just this little dude. I'm like little kid, man. And she's got me all bundled up. You know, I got my little hoodie on and my, you know, my jacket. And um, she goes to the Kentucky Fried Chicken in, Por in Northeast Portland on like, I think it's uh, Ainsworth and MLK, Martin Luther King Boulevard. There's a church's chicken and a uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, both across from one another. And uh, she goes through the drive through of the Kentucky Fried Chicken and she gets me a bucket of chicken. I'm just a little kid, right? But we had been out hustling all day and my mom used to reward me with either a trip to the video arcade or money or food. Um, and this became, a, you know, a relationship that I had in my life to money, <laughs> right? Uh, the video distractions and food. So I'm trying to get to the point in which I help you understand how addiction comes into your life and how it came into mine. So my mom leaves me at the park, right? And it's a dreary, rainy, cold-ass day in Portland, like so many days. And that's why I don't live there right now. I love Portland, Oregon. I love that space. But I'll tell you what, in the wintertime, it can be really, really challenging. And me and Monica love to go to the Northwest in the summer. That's where we home in the summer. You know, we get in the van and travel up there and it's great. So I'm there in the park and it's cold, it's wet. And I remember holding this bucket of chicken, you know, as this little boy and the bucket of chicken is warming me. And I'm like, oh, that feels good. And I remember my mom leaving and my stomach just sunk. You know, it was like watching my protector drive away, watching, you know, the love of my life, my mom drive away. And as she drove away, I was left in this space of fear. And fear came over me and sadness and sorrow came over me. And this relationship that I had with my mom that I felt safe going into a drug house with her. I felt safe going into a store and stealing with her. I felt safe going anywhere with her. Like my mom was bigger than life, even though she was only like a, 
shit, she was like a five foot tall Native American woman. She wasn't like, you know, hell on wheels, but she was for me, you know, being a little kid. It was like, you know, I just loved her so much. And as she drove away, I remember taking that chicken and eating that chicken, you know, and being like, oh, this is comforting me. And now, like, my relationship with my mom that was filled with grief and pain and even betrayal became uh, transformed into my relationship with the chicken. So I started eating that chicken, you know, and I was filling the void of my relationship with a substance. And this is how I define addiction, is that it's the place in which you trade a substance for a relationship. Now, maybe it's a relationship with your with your feminine, and maybe it's a relationship with your masculine. Maybe it's a relationship with a child within you. Maybe it's your relationship to new people, your relationship to your family, your relationship to your community. Maybe it's your relationship to God, to the elements. All of these things you can trade for a substance. And your relationship that is meant to bring you to a place of emotional understanding and emotional evolution, because that's what relationships do. The Bible says that iron sharpens iron iron as a man so sharpeth another you know these are wisdoms right not that all of the bible is true but that is a very true statement that the friction that we have from relationships sharpens us we are sharpened individuals because of relationship but when we begin to trade relationship for a substance to control our emotions and that substance could be the substance of money it could be the substance of drugs alcohol food i mean you name it Whenever you take a substance and replace a relationship, you are devaluing your spiritual growth. And this is something that resentment, right, is a catalyst for. As we are in resentment, we tend to trade resentment, right, the relationship of coming to gratitude for resentment. That sounds like, you know, way far out, right? Why am I going to be grateful for resentment? Well, if you know the teachings that I share in, in the manipulation of metaphysical architecture and energy, if you've read my book, if you know how the density of human suffering can be the catalyst for the miracle realm, and how as we work in that medicine role, we really begin to challenge ourselves through empathy to step into that space, then you would know that in gratitude, we find the greatest teacher of teachers. So thank you so much for allowing me to encourage this morning, for sharing from my heart. I hope you um, received that word of encouragement for you. And now it is time for us to step into the prayer. So the prayer place is a place that we come to meet with Source Energy. And as we meet with Source Energy, we open up the infinite expanse of love, the infinite expanse of peace, knowledge, wisdom. You know, this infinite intelligence that resides inside of all of us, we are a gateway to the access point of that, you know, to the access point of the source, wow. whatever that may be for you, you know, maybe it's Jesus Christ. I know that name well. Maybe it's Allah. Maybe it's Buddha. Maybe it's uh, Yahweh. Maybe it's Jah. You know, maybe it's Yusin. Maybe it's what a great spirit, Holy Spirit, whatever it is. You know, realize that this access point, this meeting of a human being, a flawed human being, flawed and perfect at the same time, in access to the universal intelligence, this is prayer. This is where we meet with the divine. Now, how do we get there? You know, I come there with gifts of gratitude. You know, this is how I enter into the holy of holies, the place in which I begin to encounter the graces of God. You know, this is how I come into that space. So, yes, Mother Mary, Kuan Yin, Isis, um, all of the feminine, the goddess, the God, all of these different names. You know, in the fluidity of, of being both feminine and masculine, we are in a realization that God, goddess, all of it, mother, father is unified. So we are that essence, you know, within our own intelligence as we begin to evolve into that space. So this realization of where we're going is a travel. It's a travel together. You know, I hold the keys to the car because I've called the meeting. Um, but you hold the keys to your vehicle as well. So just being in simple agreement gives us the opportunity to find the magnification of our prayers. There's a lot of needs that are out there right now. We're going to try to do our best to meet those needs and to pray ourselves into the eternal realm in which all wisdom is in, innately within us. So I'm going to begin here by... 
giving thanks. And then we're going to move into a space in which uh, I begin to pray in the light language, the Holy Spirit, um, speaking in tongues, the sun language, I've heard it called. All of these different ways in which we understand that, you know, the channel is open. So I'm going to open the channel up and then, you know, if something comes to me at the end, I'll also give a word of, of prophecy and encouragement to people. So um, yesterday was very powerful. I don't know what today is going to be like. You know, I just know that going into this space, I'm going to meet my oldest friend, you know, the creator. So I hope you will join me in this. And the way that you can join me is simply just by sitting in, in reflection and in your prayer. If you feel a need to send hearts, to send encouraging words, do that. Most of the time my eyes are closed until I feel that space in which I can really, um, really come to uh, awakening. So, So I'll go ahead and pray right now. And thank you for joining me. I love you guys so much. Just feeling the earth and connecting to the earth, connecting to the heavens, expanding the circle of light as we come in here, blessing all those from the doorway in to the doorway out, blessing all those in our circle, creating the circle of protection, love, and infinite intelligence. Thank you for all those joining through uh, the miracle of technology, being here, listening to my voice, listening to and feeling into the space. We give witness to the power of the infinite intelligence. We give thanks to the mother, to the father, to the child. We give thanks to all those that have come into this space holy and pure, we, this is a space in which intention of love is manifested itself. We thank you for this intention of love, for the intention of the ability to, to look at our emotions with gratitude. We give thanks to the air, the water, the fire, the earth, gravity, time, and spirit. We thank you for the above place, the below place, the inside place, the east, the south, the west, the north, and all the holy ones that are there. The Gahe, the Kachina, the Yebache, the holy angel light beings of the Atom people, the people that my feet are on, and also the the ancestral lands of all those that are in this prayer place, all those that have come now to this prayer, to this, this seek this place of connection to the source, to the intelligence, the great I am, the mystery, the one, the holy, the place in which we come to realize the goddess, the God, that very powerful energy within us. We thank you for all the holy people that are here, for all the angels that are here. We thank you for the guidance of the Holy Spirit within our lives. We thank you that you have moved upon the earth now, that you have brought us to a place of great resilience. And in this place of resilience that we are fortified through the power of beauty. We thank you for beauty above, beauty below, beauty beside, beauty in front, beauty behind, beauty within. We thank you that you are a light to our footsteps, a shield of faith to protect us from the arrow that flies by night, that in this place of hidden magic, that we are the power to release love upon the earth. We thank you that every tree, every leaf, every mountaintop, every single uh, stone person, every single uh, people that are in the place underneath us, all of the holy essence of this very beautiful playground of Mother Earth, all of them, the singing of the birds, all of the, the representations of life itself, all of those are bearing witness to the prayer of love, to the prayer of life, to the prayer of growth. We thank you for the rains. We thank you for the signs and the miracle wonders of life around us. We thank you for the beauty of the sun. We thank you for the beauty of the clouds. We thank you for the protection that you give to us. We thank you that you have even brought us into relationship with COVID-19. We thank you for that space in which we are in relationship to this virus. We thank you that in this place of relationship to the virus that you have brought us a great insight into our own mind, into our own family, into our own community, into our own relationship with source energy. We thank you that you have allowed for us to be in a place of relating to this energy, this uh, this space in which we are relating to how our government is showing up, how the institution of religion is showing up, how the institution of education is showing up, how all of these communities are showing up in this time of great need. In this time of great need, we pray that you would empower all those people who are in a place of authority, who have called themselves to the place of speaking for those that cannot speak for themselves, to speaking for those on those high platforms, utilizing technology. We pray that you would empower them right 
now with a great curiosity, a great knowingness, a great empathy, a great power of truth. If there is a voice in the darkness that needs to be heard, we pray that you would loosen that tongue and that we would have the ability to understand through your own innate wisdom inside of us what is truth. We pray that you would help us to navigate the conspiracy theories and all of the different things that have come up in this time, that we would not be clouded with fear, but instead that we would be able to be in a place of great discernment. We pray for spiritual discernment. We pray for the ability to utilize our intuition and our intellect and to walk upon the earth as free individuals, free and sovereign in this time. We thank you for divine health in every single cell of our bodies. We thank you that those that have asked for prayer, that their needs are being met even right now, that you are working in the families, in the minds, in the hearts of the people who have been called into this place in which they are hospitalized. We pray that you would supernaturally relieve the power of healing upon them, that you would work in the hands of the doctors, work in the words of the doctors, work in the vibrational frequencies of energy around them, that light itself would minister to them, that you would send forth an assignment of ministering and warring angels to impart wisdom to their body cells, that they're in immunity system would begin to function in a way that is so powerful that it overcomes even the diseases that have stricken us as a people right now we pray that faith in their faith they would receive this message that even the star nations themselves the entities that work in the unseen parts of our lives, the great Holy Spirit would work now in a way to bring about revelation in our life, that you would help us to understand how to pray peace upon the earth, that we would see and witness a time in which the soldiers put down their guns and pick up drums and dance and sing songs. We thank you for the awakening of peace upon the earth. We thank you for the awakening of truth upon the earth, of gratitude upon the earth. We thank you that we are living in a time in which those that have been separated are now unified. We thank you for unity upon the earth. We thank you that you have realized our own intentions, our own guilt, our own shame, and that you have used it in the fires of our ancestral freedom. We thank you for the fires of our ancestors burning across the continents of this great world, burning in Europe, burning in Asia burning in Africa, burning in America, in all of the island nations. We thank you for the fires of our ancestors burning in those places, bringing us closer to the air, the water, the fire, the earth. We thank you for the waters that we drink, the eternal waters of life, the wellspring of life in our heart, in our mind. We thank you for the winds of change blowing upon the earth. We thank you for the confidence of laying our hands in the ground, that the earth itself is our pillow. We thank you for the comfort that Mother Earth is giving us. We thank you for the relationship that we have to the animals people. We thank you for the relationship that we have to the ones that swim in the oceans, the ones in the rivers, the ones that fly above us, all of the insects. We thank you for the relationship that we have with all living beings upon the earth. We thank you for the living beings that are working in the unseen parts of our lives, for those that have gone forth into the angelic, into the heavenly, into the spiritual realm that have made a way for us. We thank you for all of our children that have been birthed into this place of consciousness, that have allowed for them to be a witness to the very power of what it means to be curious, what it means to be filled with faith. We pray that you would increase our faith in us, that you would bring us to a place of revelation, that you would impart to us the spiritual gift of encouragement, the spiritual gift of wellness, the spiritual gift of prophecy, the spiritual gift of speaking in the language of light. We thank you for these impartations of great wisdom into us. We thank you that you have allowed for our intuition to expand and that you have been a light to our footsteps. We thank you that holiness is in us. And as we are in relationship with holiness, that we are loosened from the power of our own mind. And instead we are stepping into the infinite intelligence. We thank you for all those wisdoms that come through as we step into the trance, into the place in which we begin to understand the holiness of the living God. We thank you for the Most High that works throughout us. We thank you that you have given us the place of calling upon the names of Goddess, the names of God, the holy ones that are here in the unseen parts of our lives. We thank you that every mountaintop itself is filled with the angels. We thank you that you have made us uh, holy, that you have called us a holy people, that you have allowed for us to be in that place of relationship to the Christ consciousness, in relationship to the holy impartation of the Holy Spirit. Sheno ma wa debo da di baki unka do kanito ma baki unka sini. Ritika uka madi, todita shoma, ultima donkasiniti, 
Uni rati sanata waki, shekun kamani, pati don an esendi tu kishina maruteta kane tokaye, ori makasi ni tishkumani ta aniwa, uni mamba do titi kori ma, risini to rama wachi aso, uni ma zeni tashwani wakon, wani ta ani amato. Osi asi ni tushki ma wakani o ni ba ni ta asi ni tu rima eshi ni tu mare wa anati to ka e ni ta se ni te se na to ni wa ame si ni tushi na to na le to ani o ni ta ma ta o ti si ni ta ti ka ma ona o na ta ati shari bo ku ma Renania, what a word, a word, a word. I do want it, I see now. I need one, you walk inside. I see no, you know, my own. I see to Nina, you are now my. I see no, I need one, I see now. Ani no ashi ni no ani wani da gani ya mauni ya ani da adeu gasi ni da maya aya aya na adeu maya ani wala ni na ya ya aya ni ya waya ni ya na ya we have danced together since the dawn of culture. We have stood at the mountain, we have looked to the heavens. And we have been in relationship, for it was love that allowed for those in the heavens to manifest themselves, to show themselves to us. Know this love again. Know this love of your galactic citizenship. Know that it is the peace that surpasses the greatest understanding that comes through in your dance, that comes through in your song, that comes through in your place of connectedness. You have known this place. You have known the freedom from fear. You have known the great trance of your ancestors, the dance of the heavens. You have known the dance of the earth, the water, the fire, the wind. You have known what it means to stand in that place of holiness and how letting go of the isolation and letting go of the need of weapons brings you to the place in which you understand your heart. It is your heart that has come to that place seeking that memory locked within you. It is a space that you are unable to forget in your contemporary culture in the space in which you have isolated yourself into your home, you have tried to forget that which is woven in your DNA. You have tried to say that you are simply a job. You have known since the dawn of the essence of consciousness that you are more, that you are a citizen of the earth, that you are a citizen of the star nations, that you are the very holiness of God, goddess, that you are the very holiness of the feminine, the masculine, that you are the very holiness of life itself. You are the witness of that which has been and that which is coming. You are in the space that is non-linear, the cycle of life, the eternal place in which the now is the representation of that which is in the past, that which is in the future, and that which is in the feeling of knowing that you have been here before. Realize this as you witness the very power unfolding of the great 
place of restoration, restoration of the air, the water, the fire, the earth, reclaiming the identity of holiness and sovereignty, remain in that place of wonder, remain in that place of walking the earth, your feet against her ground, your ear to her heartbeat, your eyes to the stars that shine as her eyes look upon you. She is the eyes of billions of sovereign, energetic light beings. No longer are we to be in that place of captivity to fear, resentment, and to the isolation of this institution, but instead free. We have shown up now the billions of star nations here for this time of great awakening to realize, is this the point in which they will utilize the technologies that have been given to free themselves from the captivity of financial insecurity? Is this the time as your great institution of oil begins to fail, as your great institutions of government begin to fail, as your great institutions of religion begin to fail, as your great institutions of education fail you? As your great institutions of medicine fail you, is this the time in which you will rekindle the fire of your ancestors, in which you will dance again in the starlight, in which you will hold your hand to the heavens and realize that the angel themselves know you by name? Is this the time that you will claim the feast table that has been laid before you and that you will be in the place of awakening, a rebirth of consciousness for the next 7,000 generations? You are it. It is this space of great reconciliation that we are brought to to teach us of the willingness of submission to be like the water that flows and gives life to the tree and gives life to the elk and the deer and the wolf and the lion and all of the holy ones. It is to be like this. You are the stewards of this planet. Walk in that stewardship. Reclaim the authority that the creator has given to you. You are it. You are love incarnated. This wisdom floweth within the soul. It is the soul's memory that activates this place. It is the release that brings the fortitude. It is the flow that brings confidence. It is humility that allows for you to be in the space in which you realize your eternal wisdom. It is the place of confidence and love that allows for the hosts of the heavens to emerge. There was a time when your innocence allowed for you to be truthfully loving. Remember the innocence within you. Be bold as the child of curiosity. Be bold as the child of love. Witness this time of great reconciliation upon the earth in which redemption and freedom is found, in which the chains of captivity have simply fallen away, crumbled in the ashes of an institutional mindset that leaves us now in our authority to claim the beauty Struggle not, for the door is open to you. Struggle not, for the door is open to you. Struggle not, for the door is open to you. The spiritual life is a life that is easy. It is an easy life to know that the angels themselves are with you. To know that the Holy One is with you, that love is your guidance. This is the easy way. Oh, this word of confidence and poetry and blessing I give unto you. Hmm. Yeah, you have looked upon the buffet and you have eaten of many different items, but are these items even benefiting your body? The buffet of spirituality is set before you and you have thought to yourself that, oh, if I eat from here, if I eat from there, if I fill my plate full, that I will be of great intellect. 
when all of the outside institutions and organizations have done nothing but brought you to a place of obesity. You are eating yourself of the spiritual buffet into confinement in your spiritual body. Realize that it is discipline in knowing the prayer and the meditation and that the truth is within you that frees you from this. All of the institutions of religion, all the institutions that have created these dogmas, these doctrines, all of these things, you have ate of the buffet and you've still found yourself wanting. Why is simple. The why is within you. What are the questions that you ask your soul? How do you show up in service? You are confined to the buffet table in which you are eating and eating and eating and eating, but yet there is no action of love. Your home place is even void of love, and you still try to minister in a place in which you activate yourself in the authority that you have given to others. Realize the truth is within you, daughter. That inside of you is the place in which the material of the information of the buffet that you have eaten yourself into isolation would be digested. You have not digested the truth enough to fortify your muscular body. You have just constantly fed and fed and fed your body. You're in a place of isolating yourself in wisdom and paralyzing yourself from action. Why have you agreed to be in the family that you are in? You have agreed to be in the family that you are in because it is the family that you are in that will bring you transformation, yet you hide from this. Love those that are around you, everyone that is around you. This is your first ministry. Oh, son, you have agreed for spontaneous healing of the two-legged. You have agreed that the wisdom of the Lord, the wisdom of the Holy Spirit can heal the sick, but yet you struggle with the idea of the earth being healed? How is this confusion in your mind? How are you a double-minded person that you would understand that healing can come to the two-legged, that transformation can come to the two-legged? You have studied the power of consciousness, but yet when you look upon the earth, you see only destruction. You have thought of nuclear waste. You have thought of the waste of, of the plastic. You have thought of the destruction of the earth, and you have brought yourself to a dismissing the power of consciousness to heal the planet herself. This is the place of great awakening to realize that spontaneous healing is not only for the two-legged. Spontaneous healing is for all the creatures of the earth. And as we steward that space of the expanse of our lodge poles, we are the reckoning and the healing of the planet itself. Realize this, son. Realize this. You have called yourself my son, but yet you hold your hand only to those that are around you. Those that are two-legged, you are offer your healing wisdom. You offer your energy, your Reiki to the two-legged, but yet you hold back your healing to the mountain, to the river, to the stream, to the ocean. Expand your lodgepole, son. Expand your lodgepole. Open up your heart. Open up your breath of life. Realize that it is this that you have sought. As you walk through the forest, as you touch the tree, send your energy as your ancestors have known. This is what is written between the fabric. This is what is written between the realms. Realize this, son. Realize this. How can you not realize that what was taken from you was given? The thief came to steal, but you were the one that opened the door. You see, you have said to yourself over and over again, they took this from me. They took this from me. Realize the assignment that was given was an assignment to lead you to a place of evolution. As you unwind 
the captivity of that agreement within yourself to be a victim of the process. Realize that as you lay down in humility, as you receive the gift of trauma, you are now given the place in which your vulnerability and intimacy can help you to free others. It is not through the space of giving that trauma to others that you have been rose up from. You have not been molded from the very clay of this earth to be captive to the victim. The thief came, yes, but now you must receive from the thief the energy of the trauma so that you may manifest through the density of captivity, freedom, a freedom for those who are around you for your sisters. Your sisters have come to you in circle, have come to you in ceremony, and you have dismissed the power that is within you. You have dismissed the trauma because you feed upon it. You have fed your soul in that trauma. You have eaten of the trauma repeatedly. You have invited the thief into your home so many times, the home of your mind. He is living there rent-free. He did hurt you. He did betray you. This is true. Now, what are you going to do with that medicine, daughter? What are you going to do with it? How are you going to use it to help your sistren that have come to you? But yet in your silence, you have been disobedient to the very nature that allowed for the gift to manifest itself. You are gifted through your pain. Through what you have said was stolen, you have given yourself a gift. Claim your space at the feast. Claim your space through the power of empathy. Realize that this gift that you have been given of empathy that has paralyzed you has paralyzed you because you now must sit with the practice. Only through the practice will you allow for the evolution of your spirit to step you into that space. Why does it hurt you for me to share the truth? It hurts because the truth is freeing. I am burning like a blue flame fire that cuts through the captivity of the chains that have been put on you from the very first time that you allowed for the victim to come in. The fire is burning right now, freeing you. Realize that. As your body witnesses the power of freedom, as you witness the chains falling off of you, as you feel the chills from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet, understand that it is the Holy Spirit inside of you speaking to you, that this truth, this wisdom that is flowing through light to your very consciousness is imparting to you. These are mysteries that we have come to be with, to sit with, the mystery of why is it that pain is our greatest catalyst? Oh, in suffering, we all know obedience. Yet, of course, the context of the collective consciousness and, of course, the universal mind does not mandate that it is suffering that would bring us to evolution. But yet, when we free ourselves from the catalyst of suffering, we are in a space in which we begin to understand that suffering is of our own design. We are the experiential nature of the universal mind. As we step into the space of the universal consciousness, we are freed from the suffering in the linear perception of reality. These are fundamental practices of those that have gone through linear into the cycle. Yes, we have manifested into this realm of existence, of course, because it is in this realm of existence that we bring forth the cycle of the eternal presence of our soul. Your eternal soul has brought wisdoms to this place. Has brought wisdoms to this place from the heavenly realms. Mm. that which is coming has been here before of course of course that which is coming has been here before what is new is the learning of that 
the impartation of the code that has been manifested to us, the program that has been manifested to us. Is it an uninstalled programs within the matrix of reality? Is it that we go in and realize that within the density of that space, we can find sovereignty? I feel like this time that we are in is a space of great representation of course we have sat at this table before of course we have been in the temple before of course we have prayed this vision into existence was it us that prayed this vision into existence i am in a space in which i am completely wonderful in a place of wondering of the dimensions the dimensions that we walk in each one of them has a shift a doorway of course the constructs of the architect are here for us to play we have been given the constructs as soul energy, as life force energy. And as we sit here and ponder the mysteries of this, are we in a place in which we are calling upon the great division? I am in a place of holding the metaphysical architecture of love. If you would be in agreement with that, then we can be in the catalyst of our great fortification. Of course, the visions of the past, of the great wars that have been upon the earth are constantly in the programming. The loop of the cycle of these things has constantly been brought to us. Yet are we called to realize that programming and fortify the space because of our own innate fear? Is the consciousness not calling us to hold the space of love? Agree with me now that in this time, we are fortifying the space of love, that the density of love is creating the magnitude and the magnification of our own collective consciousness to pull in those energies of its likeness. It is this dimensional frequency that we awakened from the dream and there are gardens on the outside of the bank buildings already. Have we gone into that space and not realized that we are here for this time? We are travelers on the wave of interconnectedness to time, to gravity, to the air, the water, the fire, the earth, to the very source nature of the internal intelligence of the architect? Of course. The playground is here. We bear witness to the architecture in which we have pondered for millions of years. What I am saying is I have the hope of love. I do not believe that we have to be confined to the constructs of the cycles of destruction in order to manifest itself into that deep resonant frequency of love. I am in a space in which I am completely obedient to the fact that I am the catalyst for love. As those that sit at the table and sit in the place of the altar understand that they are in the fortification of love, is it the immature that doubts that the space is unfolding because of our collective experience? Of course, we have been given keys to harness the fear of the immature. The fear of the immature is yet the catalyst for the fires that we have sat around since the very dawn of understanding of how to manipulate energy. We have gone into suffering. We have gone in because we fear not the tools of empathy, but we are allowing ourselves to feel even into the fear of this collective experience that we may bring about the catalyst for change. It is not through this fear that we would fortify the space of separation but instead the great foundation of unity of course I am optimistic of course I am in the space of the child the, spot, the child is in the space of curiosity that is the place of faith I have given and I will give before again yeah Thank you so much. Who? Mm. Beauty above, beauty below, beauty beside, beauty in front, beauty behind, beauty within. I am, we are made beautiful again. My name is Andrew Ecker, my mother Kathy Lindsay, my father Dale Ecker, my mother's mother Elva Gallegos, my father's mother Evelyn Beatty, my mother's father Leroy Lindsay, and my father's father Wayne Ecker. I came into this body in Portland, Oregon, and I'm residing here in Phoenix, Arizona. I am in a space and time that I am totally equipped to live in. And you are in that space and time. Put your hand on your heart right here. Give yourself a little drum beat from drumming sounds. And I want you to repeat after me. Say, body, 
Come on, say it with me. Body, I give you permission to live in complete gratitude, love, joy, happiness, and abundance. I give you permission to feel better. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for joining me here. Um, man, went deep into that um, psychic place there. Yeah, and that place of connection. The, the source is really bringing me a lot of prophecy for people. You know, I know sometimes that prophecy could be challenging to hear. But I want you to know that you know, take it for the truth that was given to me. You know, I, I prayed, you prayed with me at the beginning that I would show up in a way of goodness. And I hope that um, that you are able to receive that. So just cleanse yourself now of that which no longer serves you, that which does serve you. Love you guys. I'll see you back here tomorrow for this ministry. If you'd like to give and you can give. You know, the PayPal is there. I'll go ahead and put it back on here in the notes. Um, PayPal. If you can't give, that's okay. You're giving but your time by being here. And that's the most important thing. Um, we love sharing these words of encouragement with people. We love being in ministry together. And look forward to seeing you all here tomorrow. Same time-ish. So... Um, you know, I, I slept in a little bit today. Well, I was up at like three o'clock in the morning and I just went back to bed. Um, woke up with something on my heart, on my mind, but we generally try to meet here about eight o'clock, seven 30 sometimes, um, nine o'clock sometimes. <laughs> anyway, I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining and blessings to you. I'll try to go back in and, um, answer all of the comments as best as I can. That's right, Zeke. Thanks, Kylie. Love you. Robin, love you. Oh, tonight I'm going to be doing an introduction to the Sacred Seven and um, the journeying process of fortifying the architecture of um, our relationships. And Zeke, if you haven't been on that and you have Zoom on your phone, I would love for you to come. I'm going to do it around seven. I'll post it on the Sacred Seven page. Uh, Robin, Kylie... Uh, any of you that would like to come to that tonight, we're launching a free, uh, well, donation-based journey. Uh, this is the first time that we're doing it on Zoom. And tonight is an introduction. And then we go into a seven-week process of really learning about ourselves. And a great time to do it, right? Um, so really raising up perfect sevens, you know, around the world and learning this introductory inter, um, ceremonial introduction uh, indigenous technology of self-identity is very powerful. It's freed me in so many things in my life. All right. Love you guys so much. Um, the Sacred Seven, you can go to the group, ask to be a member of the group, and we'll um, we'll get you in there. And then tonight, 7 o'clock, I'll be doing an introduction to the Sacred Seven again. Love you guys. Blessings. <laughs>